Hey guys, my name is Tristan from the CPAPstore.ca. A bit of a different video today. We're not talking about CPAP. In fact, we're talking about a medical thing that is kind of near and dear to my heart, or at least it's been for the last few months because over the summer, I've had a problem with tonsil stones. Kind of embarrassing, kind of gross, but I've researched it so much and finally solved them for myself. I was like, why not make a video and just help people who might also have the same issues as me. Uh, so I wanna make an overarching video on what causes tonsil stones, the solutions, the solutions that I've tried, as well as the relationship between CPAP and tonsil stones. Now, what are tonsil stones? Tonsil stones are a small deposit of bacteria and debris that gets stuck in the crypts of your tonsils, um, and they typically get inflamed, uh, and then they burst out of your tonsils, almost like a pimple, if you will, um, and it causes bad breath, sore throat um, and ear pain and overall is just nasty. So how do we get rid of them? Well, before we talk about how we get rid of them, because there's a lot of people on the internet just saying like gargle salt water, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't really help if you don't know your problem and why you're getting tonsil stones. So I really wanna make sure everyone understands the science behind them. So for example, your tonsil, might look like this on a normal person, like a plate and it's on the back of your throat. Now, if you eat food, for example, this ping pong ball, and you eat food and this is your tonsil and it's hitting the back of your throat, typically the food will just slide off your tonsil and you can swallow it normally. However, if you're one to get larger tonsils or more inflamed tonsils, your tonsil is gonna look more like this bowl. It's gonna grow different crisps and different things to catch that bacteria because it's inflamed. And therefore, when you eat, your little crumb or whatever gets stuck inside the tonsil and now it can't get out and now you have a food particle in your tonsil growing and uh, having bacteria eat it and stuff like that. Now the obvious question is, how do I get my tonsil from looking like this bowl to like this plate? How do I have less inflamed tonsils? Well, one thing is going to be genes. So you might just have genetics that are a person with larger tonsils or more inflamed tonsils. And if that is the case, um, and there's nothing else you can do to fix it, some people do get their tonsils removed. However, a lot of people with these genes of having problems with their tonsils also unknowingly are inflaming their tonsils dramatically, which is what I was doing. And I was getting food stuck in my tonsils, not knowing it, and that was causing the tonsil stones, okay? So there are a few different things that we wanna talk about in terms of inflammation. The first thing is unhealthy foods. So processed foods, uh, a lot of inflammatory foods like your seed oils, uh, like canola oil and stuff like that. Canola oil is one of the healthiest cooking oils. It has the lowest level of saturated fat. Is going to inflame your tonsils. And then you're also eating at the same time, unfortunately. As it's getting worse, you're eating and things can get stuck in there. So unhealthy foods is probably one of the number one contributors to tonsil stones. Now in my case, these foods are fried chicken and potato chips, some of my most favorite foods on the planet. And unfortunately, these foods, I've narrowed it down, gives me tonsil stones and inflame my sore throat almost 100% of the time. Okay, the next thing is air and uh, mouth breathing. So dry air, unhealthy air, or mouth breathing, kind of CPAP related, right? If you have that dry mouth, you're not using your humidity that can create a dry environment for your tonsils. You can also be looking at just air quality in general. So things like uh, indoor air quality, if it's dirty, your VOCs, your CO2s, uh, your PM 2.5s, your particle matters. We can talk about that in a different video. So if you recently moved into like a basement suite or something like that, or you moved locations, air quality could be something that is contributing to an inflamed tonsil. Another thing that can contribute to inflamed tonsils is stress. So whether that's home stress, work stress, you're not sleeping, your hormones are going to kick up. You're gonna create a lot of inflammatory chemicals in your body, like cortisol, for example, that's gonna make things like cytokines. And these types of hormones in your body is gonna create inflammatory, not just in your tonsils, but all over. Um, and next thing is bacterial viral infections. If you actually have strep throat or some sort of viral infection or bacterial infection, um, you can expect your tonsils to swell up. The next thing is smoking, which can also increase inflammation in your tonsils. Then you could have vitamin deficiencies, such as vitamin D or K2 or zinc deficiencies. And basically, um, these deficiencies are going to not allow your body to uptake calcium as easily. Um, and so if you have these deficiencies, if you're low in vitamin D or K2, um, you might be more susceptible to tonsil stones because the bacteria can use that to make their little bacteria house, AKA the tonsil stone. Um, and at last, tonsil stones can create more tonsil stones. So the scar tissue or just tonsil stones in the back of your throat, creating more nooks and crannies back there can actually make your tonsils 
better at trapping food and actually make the problem even worse. So those things there are all ways that you're gonna have inflamed tonsils. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have tonsil stones. Those are just the reasons to have inflamed tonsils. Now let's talk about the steps that cause the tonsil stone. So like we said, the tonsil stone is typically made out of food matter that gets put in your tonsils and that debris getting stuck there uh, turns into that white gross stone. So what exactly is happening there? Well, you're having a bacteria buildup and a biofilm buildup. So biofilm, think of it as the bacteria armor or the bacteria house. So if you just have bacteria on a table, you can just wipe it off. Or if you have it in your mouth, for example, on your teeth, you can just wipe it off. So what do the bacteria do to try to make cement themselves in the environment that they like? Well, they create biofilms, okay? And so even when you're brushing your teeth, the toothbrush and sometimes even floss can't brush away the plaque and then you eventually have to go to the dentist. Well, this plaque is basically the armor for the bacteria to live and stay in your mouth. The same thing happens in rivers, which is a very good example. If you go to a riverbed and pick up a rock, you're gonna notice that rock has that kind of a slippery nature to it. So what is the slipperiness? Well, that slipperiness is the biofilm buildup. It's bacteria on the rock that realize that it's just gonna get washed away. So it makes that slippery bacteria slimy film to protect itself from the water rushing over it. And it's the same thing with your tonsil stones. So if you just have a food particle there and the bacteria wanna eat it, if they just eat it and just have a jolly old time, you could just get rid of it with a swig of water and they're gone. So by creating that bacteria filled biofilm that deposit that tonsil stone that's nice and hard and easy for them to live in, uh, they create a place that they are more easily stuck and they can stay in your mouth. So I hope that all makes sense. And now that you understand that, we can talk about the solutions to tonsil stones. The first thing is remove foods that cause tonsil stones. As I said, for me, it's fried chicken and chips. Almost 100% of the time, I have that problem. Why? Because I'm inputting that bad food, that processed food into my body. Inflammatories like canola oils, like high grease content, uh, does actually inflame my skin and also my tonsils. And therefore, eliminating that food has pretty much eliminated uh, having tonsil stones for me. Okay, so the next solution is going to be gargling your mouth with water and sloshing, rinsing your mouth with water, sloshing it around after as many meals as possible, okay? Like I said, with solution one, you're getting that bad food stuck in your throat or any food, depending on the person, it could be spinach, it could be other, it could be oats, you know, it doesn't have to be unhealthy food. Your tonsils might grip onto different foods differently. So if you can rinse your mouth and gargle your mouth with just plain old water after every meal or as many meals as possible, you're gonna get rid of a lot of that um, immediate crumbs and stuff left behind in your tonsil, okay? Now that also means you have to reduce snacking. So if you have larger meals and reduce snacking, then you won't have to gargle water as much. But if you just eat a lunch and then you gargle some water and then you have a couple snacks, then it kind of defeats the purpose of the water. So you wanna have basically nothing in your mouth for as much of the day as possible. So have your breakfast, gargle water, and then you don't have anything going into your mouth. Nothing is going to create that tonsil stone. But if you're snacking in between breakfast and lunch, then you're gonna have a lot of food in your mouth that could possibly create tonsil stones. Next thing is gargling salt water. So after the end of the day, uh, before bed, Gargle salt water if you can, because the salt water is gonna create a less friendly environment for those bacteria to hang out and live in. Another thing you can do is gargle with baking soda because baking soda is quite basic and most bacteria like acidic environments. So if you're gargling with salt water or baking soda, um, you're going to create a more basic environment in your mouth. And some people just have naturally, genetically, a more acidic environment in their mouth, so they're gonna have more of that bacteria. You can also change your uh, toothpaste, for example, I've started using this uh, baking soda toothpaste, Arm & Hammer, and basically that's gonna allow me to not use uh, baking soda water as much because I'm getting it kind of in my toothpaste. And what I've recently switched to, which has really worked, is TheraBreath, TheraBreath Fresh Breath, which has sodium bicarbonate in it, um, which is baking soda, and it also has um, hydrogen peroxide and different ingredients. But I find that TheraBreath mouthwash has been absolute godsend. So if you take one thing from this video, try out this guy, gargle with it down your throat ah, every night before bed, and you might see a difference just in this because uh, it's gonna help get everything out of your tonsils as well as create a really bad environment for 
bacteria to live. Next thing is dental hygiene. Again, similar to this, uh, changing your toothbrush. So if you're not changing your toothbrush regularly, I already mentioned the toothpaste, um, and you can also use tongue scraping. So least bacteria possible in your mouth for the most amount of time, the better. So if you use a tongue scraper before bed, you can get a lot of that bacteria on your tongue, off of your tongue, and therefore you're getting rid of as much bacteria as you can. Uh, next thing is a tonsil remover. So a lot of people online, if you look at you know tonsil removing videos and stuff like that, a lot of people use Q-tips. Um, Q-tips have kind of a rougher texture, even if you dip them in water first, and they're not great, they're not easy, um, they're not long enough. And so people who use Q-tips, and, and I was trying this because I, you know, I saw a tonsil stone for the first time, I was like, what, what is that, get it out. I tried to use Q-tips, and I think I was doing more damage because I was kind of poking around my tonsils, and they're quite sensitive. And so if you want, you can get a tonsil remover like this, off Amazon, this one has a little nifty light in it, which is not very useful. Um, and it's probably made, you know, it's probably worth like 10 cents. But for me, it's worth quite a bit because I can remove a tonsil stone when I get them now uh, within seconds. Whereas a Q-tip, you know, I was trying to dig around for like a minute and I was just upsetting and inflaming my tonsil uh, even more. So by using a tonsil stone remover device with a smooth tip on the end, has a very smooth uh, finish on the top, uh, you're not damaging anything and you can get your tonsil stone out a lot faster. And getting that tonsil stone out faster is better because you're removing all that bacteria, you're removing that plaque, um, and you're not letting it to grow even bigger and bigger. The next thing is a vitamin K2 and vitamin D supplement. Okay, so you might be deficient in these. You don't really know until you try, so this could be something that just immediately uh, solves your tonsil stone as well. And that is because vitamin D and K2 help your body use calcium, uptake calcium in your body for your bones and stuff like that. If your body's having a hard time using that calcium, it's gonna get used somewhere and the bacteria are going to get to it first and they're gonna use that calcium to create the stone. So by taking vitamins, if you're deficient in it, definitely could help because now your body is using it instead of the bacteria. The next thing is probiotic gum. So this is probiotic gum. I think it's called Probiotic Bliss K12. So probiotics are bacteria that are good bacteria, friendly bacteria, and those with really high bad bacteria counts in their mouth are gonna have a lot more tonsil stones because they're creating uh, the stones and it's an acidic environment. So if you need more of a balance, you might wanna take a probiotic. Bacteria are just like people or animals and they don't like to be in crowded places. So when you're chewing probiotic gum and trying to introduce more positive bacteria in your mouth, they're all gonna be fighting over space. So instead of the bad bacteria having 100% of real estate in your mouth, you're introducing a lot of good bacteria and now they're fighting over space and now it's maybe like 50-50 versus having all bad bacteria. So if you think that you have bad bacteria in your mouth, perhaps you've been eating poorly, you have poor gut health, you might have poor mouth health as well, and you might need probiotic gum. Um, the last thing is CPAP related. So like we talk about with CPAP a lot, the humidity can be a big thing for people. If you're in a dry environment or just not using your humidifier chamber and your water tank, you're gonna wanna start using that. If you find that you've had more tonsil stones, you might wanna increase your humidity. Or you might have a mouth leak for example, and you might want to try, talk to your doctor first, mouth tape or chin strap, something like that, okay? Um, also, if you're not cleaning your CPAP stuff regularly, all that biofilm buildup in your mask, in your water chamber, in your tube is going to create worse quality air and more bacteria in all of those systems. So if you're using that eight hours a day and you already are susceptible to bacterial infections and stones and plaque and bacteria in your mouth, that's not gonna help. So just make sure that you're having a nice good cleaning regimen for your CPAP stuff. Um, and then the last thing is going to be removing your tonsils. So if, you, if none of these things work, talk to your doctor. Removing your tonsils is a solution that some people take. Now back to my little story time, I just wanna talk about what was happening with me, why I specifically was getting these tonsil stones this spring and summer, what was going on? Well, I spent all summer, as you can see, I have all the solutions here, trying to diagnose it and fix it. Um, and I came up with kind of the solution that thankfully has worked for me. I like doing a lot of outdoorsy activities, like camping and hanging out with friends and going to barbecues. I always bring chips, potato chips, because I love potato chips. And what would happen after every single one of these activities, after camping, I would go home and I work from home and I would bring the leftover potato chips, as you can imagine. Not only was I eating these potato chips during the weekend, but now since I had these leftover chips, I was munching on them throughout the day. We have the canola oil there. We have the inflammatory food, of course. We have the food that can get easily stuck in my throat 
and then we also have snacking. So the snacking was a big one. And I was trying to do things to fix the tonsil stones, gargling with salt water at the end of the day and blah, blah, blah. But none of that helped because throughout the day, I was always snacking a little bit on potato chips. So no matter how much I gargled water at night, no matter how much I tried to remove the tonsil stones, no matter how well I brushed my teeth, this, this was only happening at night and in the morning, of course, and throughout the day I was snacking and causing a really bad environment in my mouth uh, that was susceptible to these tonsil stones. So for me, my personal best solutions out of this lot were a few things. Number one, stop eating potato chips. Number two, gargle water after every meal, if I can. And number three, instead of using salt water, because I always found that pee, I wasn't consistent with it. Trying to mix it every night, trying to use it every night, doesn't taste that good. I was using the TheraBreath, really helped eliminate the tonsil stones. So this could be totally different than the solutions that are gonna work for you, but I hope I outlined enough of the issues and solutions in this video for you to tackle your tonsil stones the best way that you can.